Oh, for you, for your glory. 
take his feet and let them be all for you and for your glory take these feet and let them be yours we want to go where you want us to go let take my life and let it be all for you and for your glory take my life and let it be yours everything take my life and let it be all for you and for your glory take my life and let it be yours glory to god glory to god we need to give you glory lord
Thank you, Father. We are the redeemed, Father. We thank you. The redeemed of the Lord will say so. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. The God of the redeemed. We thank you, Father God. We have been redeemed from the curse of the law. We've been redeemed from sin, poverty, sickness, and lack. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name that we are redeemed. We are set free. We've been bought with a price, and we are the redeemed. We thank you, Father, the redeemed of the Lord. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. That everything that can be done for our redemption, it has been done. And we just say hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. We thank you, Father, that we can't get any more free than what we are. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that redemption is ours. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. That we have revelation knowledge of what came with that redemption. And we thank you, Father, tonight, Father God, that our eyes are opened up to see clearly, Father God, everything that belongs to us, Father God. And we thank you, Father God, that the redeemed will have revival. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Father. The redeemed didn't get redeemed to go to church. We got redeemed to change the world. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. You didn't redeem us to make us religious. You redeemed us to make us free. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty and there is freedom. And we thank you for the freedom in this place tonight. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name for a move of the Spirit of God tonight. We thank you, Father God, that you move on hearts. Open the eyes of people's hearts to make them free, Father God. Moving in families, moving in marriages, moving, Father God, in relationships. And we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name that we are free indeed. Hallelujah. Free to see clearly who we are. Free to see clearly what we have and free to go give it to others in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you for your word tonight. And we thank you that it's alive. It's not a dead book. It's a living book. We thank you, Father God. We see it clearly in Jesus' name. And we are made more and more and more in the image of Jesus. And we, are, as we behold him, we go from glory to glory in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. Well, you may be seated. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You are the redeemed. Hallelujah. I mean, I know it'll give you some good to get that revelation. Amen. Not going to be redeemed. I've already been redeemed. 
Hallelujah. There's not another thing God could do about my redemption. <laughs> Hallelujah. He don't have anything else he can do. We just love looking at what he's already done, and maybe it'll just spark a revival in us. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Maybe we'll just go ahead and partake of it. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Anybody, I know Miss Sue, go ahead and stand up. Praise the Lord. <laughs> go ahead and stand. Glory. Just go ahead and stand up. Yes. Amen. I just doubt if you're going to ask anybody got a testimony. I just say, Sue. I just say, Sue, go ahead and stand up. Because she got one. Amen. Yes. <laughs> I rejoice with her. Amen. Glory to I just said glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me see here. I got a, let me give her, Tim or Wendy or Chris or whoever's back there. You can turn on this handheld. <laughs> Go ahead and share with us a little Ooh, bit. Where do I start? Just start at the middle. <laughs> Amen. Last summer. Got a red light on it. Battery's down. Summer of 2012. We knew our son had a problem. Let's talk loud right now. And uh, God took us to Luke 1, 78, 79, that the light from heaven would shine forth on those who stood in darkness. Those who were under the shadow of death would be the star of heaven. Oh, wait a minute. These are... God took me to Isaiah 59, 21. This is my covenant that I have with you, says the Lord. My spirit is upon you. My word is in your mouth, and it shall not depart from your mouth. I say me. Nor shall it depart from the mouth of your descendants. Nor from the mouth of your descendants. Yeah. Amen. This time, this time that God just dropped from the beginning of time. Now. Oh, that was 2nd December. And that was the morning that Soleil came to the altar at the church. Amen. And I thought, I didn't think anything about it right then. And then I was leaving the church and I went, God gave me that scripture this morning. 15 January, God took me to 2 Timothy 2.26. Cause them to come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. And he said, do you trust me? Amen. And all this time, my son is out in the world, wouldn't come around a lot. I knew he was in trouble. He would deny it. I haven't seen him since February. And he came home for three days and slept. And I knew something was wrong. And I said, there's a treatment center. We can get you, you know, there's resources. We can get you help. And he denied that he had a problem, and he left. Didn't hear from him. Well, there was a drug bust. I don't even know when it happened. It's been a while. And... Uh, my son was in the house. He's 38 years old. And he's in the jail. And they told him when they arrested him, the lawyer went to see him and said, they're going to give you 30 years to life. What does a mother do with that? Right. But I will give thanks in everything. And God said, don't stop praying because I told you to stand on my word and do not waver. And it's hard. It's hard. But that fight of faith. Amen. Fight of faith. <laughs> you say that fight of faith, it's all about the flesh. You gotta have so you fight. get up in the morning, and you can't go by how you feel. You go by the word. Amen. So you keep putting the word of God in your mouth and the word of God in your mouth, and you keep claiming, and you see the end from the beginning. And I keep seeing Arden and Soleil as men of faith, strong men of the Lord, strong ministers of the word. 
Christian men that will rise up and take their place for the purpose that God has put in them. Amen. <laughs> so about three weeks ago, they changed the charge. And they said, it's not going to be 30 years to life. It's going to be 3 to 15 years. Woo! Amen. <laughs> As a mother, I'm thinking, my son will get out. Amen. And I'll be alive. Because I didn't want to think of myself passing with my son in prison. Yeah. It's a little thing, but it meant something to me. God, thank you. Three years, 15 years, whatever. But God is good. Amen. And he's merciful. <laughs> and his word will not go void. Come on. And it will achieve. It will. And it will accomplish the purpose for which it was sent. And I got a call Monday. Monday. From my son who had fallen on his face before God and said, I need help. I don't know how to get it. I don't know who to ask. But I'm an addict and I need help. <laughs> this gets good. <laughs> yes, amen. This gets good. Monday, a court representative went to the prison or went to the jail and asked to see Arden. And so they called, you know, Arden Stanley, legal. So he goes to the room to see his lawyer. And he's waiting and he's waiting and he's waiting and this man comes in that he's never seen before. And he says, are you Arden Stanley? And he said, yes. And he goes, the spirit of the Lord has sent me to represent you. Glory. <laughs> 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 the lawyer said that. The lawyer said that. He's a, court lawyer. Ordered, he's a court representative. And he said, I need to talk to your lawyer. Well, sir, he's next door. He was in the next room with somebody else. He said, I'll be right back. So they both come back into the room, and he goes, I'm so-and-so. His first name's Carl. That's all I know. And he goes, I'm going to be his representative. I need your signature. And he had all the legal forms. And so public defender said, oh, okay. And he signed it. And now... Carl, this court representative, said, I'm going to go before the judge, and you're going into a treatment center. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> then they, they were talking about you can do a day, a week, a month visit, and Arden said, no, sir. I can't be on the streets because I'm an addict. I need a lockdown facility. I need a full-time live-in residency. <sighs> He's never admitted it before. Amen. <laughs> Spirit of God. <laughs> we'll find you one. <laughs> Amen. We'll find you one. I am over the moon. I am, I am so full. God is so good to me. Amen. God's word will stand. Hallelujah. Put it in your mouth. Speak it over your family. The spirit is in Arden. I know that. I raised him. I raised him before God. I gave him a good life. Two years ago, he was pulled in, and I think it was all for the love of money, into a lifestyle that has caused him to lose everything. But God's a God of mercy. Amen. And he will restore what the locust has eaten. That's right. So I praise, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. And that three won't even be three. Amen. Glory. Rejoice. Hallelujah. Yeah. The Bible says rejoice with those that rejoice. Amen. We rejoice with you. Amen. Devil thought it'd be a life sentence, steal his whole life. No, well, we're going to take it on down to 3 to 15, and then we're not even going to do 3, and then he's going to come out free. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Get him in there. Get him freed up. Get him set free in the spirit and free from any addiction. Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. How many of y'all can believe that right now? And he won't even serve his full sentence. Amen. I don't know. How, what, he just get through with his, uh, his he get through with his, uh, what, his, his, 
treatment and just be so good, they just say, you know what, why don't you just go into the house? Amen. Amen. How many of y'all can believe that? Yeah. Glory to God. How many of y'all know Joseph went to prison and ended up running the whole thing? Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Well, let's just thank him right now. Father, we thank you. Thank you that you are good. We thank you you do watch over your word and perform it. We thank you, Father, that your word in our mouth will uproot, tear down, destroy, overthrow, build, and plant. We thank you, Father God, as we speak your word. We thank you, Father God, the power of God is released. And we thank you, Father God, nothing is impossible for us who believe. We believe the impossible, Father God. We believe nothing can be impossible for us that just dare to believe the word of God. If y'all there to believe, just go ahead and rejoice right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. The impossible in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Who wants to just do the, the possible? Let's go ahead and get the impossible done. Amen. Hallelujah. Man might say it can't be done, but I just dare to say it's, it can be done. Matter of fact, we're going to sit back and watch it be done. Amen. Matter of fact, anybody, everybody don't have to believe it, but just sit there and watch. The impossible shall be done. Amen. Glory to God. Well, turn in your Bibles, if you would. The title tonight is Faith for Revival. Amen. Anybody got faith for revival? Glory be to God. Well, because every revival that you've ever heard about, the revival, the healing revival, the teaching revival, every outpouring that's ever happened, somebody had faith that that was going to happen. God does not just pick out and choose a time when he's going to pour out his spirit. Say amen. amen. A lot of people think, well, that move ended. Now we've got to wait on another wave to come through and wait on another move of God. God's always moving. Amen. amen. Now, we don't get off on that because if that's the, what you're thinking too, you'll think God is not he's, You're waiting on another move, and we're not waiting on another move here because we say it all the time. You are a move. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Maybe they had a Azusa Street revival and that kind of faded out for whatever reason. I don't know, but I know God didn't want it to. Oh, amen. The healing revival, I guarantee you, it wasn't supposed to stop. Amen. How I many of y'all think God wants us walking in revival just about every day, everywhere we go, always carrying revival with us, always, always carrying the life of God, the glory of God? Amen. Hallelujah. So when you hear things like that, always realize that somebody was in faith that they had the revival right then. Somebody tapped into something that was available and revival broke out. Amen. So what we got to do is make sure that we've been teaching on revival and what revival might look like. It might look like the glory of God that is filling you up on the inside, spilling on over out of the outside onto the people around you. Jesus said, the glory that you have given to me, I have given it to them. Amen. So if you're waiting on the glory cloud to come, that's Old Testament. And now you might see something sometime, but the glory lives in you. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, the glory that you've given to me, I have given it to them. You're not going to get more glory. You got all the glory that you're going to get. Aren't you glad that right now, when you come and you sit here, you start developing faith that, wait a minute, I'm not waiting for the revival, I am the revival. Wait a minute, everywhere I go, I lay hands on the sick, the sick what? Shall recover. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So you got to start, and why I've been preaching the last four messages is that so that we could start getting on over into a place where we can move into faith for this revival. Because if we don't get in faith for it, and we just sitting there hoping that God does something at living faith, it's not going to come, not ever. If you're saying things like, I believe revival is coming, I believe revival is going to come to living faith, it's not coming. See, because everything happens, and it happens by what? Faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So we're not saying, see, what we're going to see is it really happened. And what we're going to get a hold of is that God is not going to bring revival here. Oh, Mildred done went ahead and preached. He already brought you here, filled up, filled up on his glory, filled up on power, filled up on revelation. You are that revival. So when you get in faith for something, you don't begin to say what's going to come. You start acting like it's already here because now faith is. The substance of things you what? hope for. You want to give substance to a revival, you bring it on over into the day. Amen. We can have it tonight. Amen. <laughs> when are we going to have this, Pastor? I don't know. When you want to have it? Oh yeah, 
because it's in you. Right, everybody, born again, raise your hand right now. You've been born again. Jesus lives in your heart. I asked Jesus into my heart, so and so time. But you know what? That is when it started. You just need to get the revelation what you got. All of Jesus lives inside of you. He has poured out His Spirit in these last days. And there will be an end time revival, I do believe. But I don't believe it's something that God is going to pour out of heaven and He's waiting to do this. He's just simply waiting on the church to see what it is we already got. See, because if you're waiting on the next big move, the next big revival, the next big thing, then you are sitting there putting it in the future when you've got to bring it over into the right now. You've got to get faith for this revival right now. And faith is right now. Amen. Go to Hebrews chapter two, uh, 4. We're going to look at having faith for this revival. Anybody want to go ahead and get in faith tonight for it? Hallelujah. And I know a lot of this stuff is new. And here's what I heard uh, last night from the Lord. That actually there's a study that's been done that says a person has to hear a message seven times to retain 25% of the message. Seven times to simply retain, retain. Because how many of y'all know I can say a lot real fast? And if you're going to get about 25% of it, you've got to hear the same message about seven times. 25% of it. So how many of y'all know if you're going to get all 100% of it, you're going to have to hear some things. Oh, that's why the Bible says faith come by what? Hearing and, and hearing the what? Word of God. Amen? So faith starts coming the more you hear these things we're going to talk about. I mean, I want to get in faith right now that every need at your house is met. Your kids are on fire for God, sold out for God. The plan of God's coming to pass at your house, and revival is right up here at 100 Heart Street right now. Amen. Glory to God. So listen to this and read this with me. Hebrews chapter 4. We're going to talk about faith for revival, so we need to look at some scripture that I love about faith. Because if we're going to see it, we're going to have to be in faith for it. And when it happens, it, will, it shouldn't surprise any of us. We, all, we go ahead and say, you know what? We've been in this thing all along. And on the, in the unseen now, I've been bringing this with me, and now you're just starting to see it in the scene. Marriage is getting right. Families acting right. Kids falling on their face before God. Hallelujah! <laughs> Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2. One of my favorite scriptures on faith. How many of y'all know the Bible says the just shall live by what? Faith. How many of y'all know the Bible says that we walk by faith and not by what? Sight. So if the just shall live by faith and you shall walk by faith. How many of y'all think faith is a pretty important topic? And your faith is not your denomination. You ask some people, what's your faith? Well, I'm a Methodist, I'm a Baptist, I'm a Presbyterian. That's not your faith. That's your denomination. Amen. So you've got to learn to live. The Bible says the just shall what? Live by faith. You can leave that all the way up. I know I want all those all the way t full speed ahead. I'm going to need to see down here. I want to see the eyes of these people right here. <laughs> Hebrews 4 verse 2 says this. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as unto them. So what he's saying right here, the gospel was preached. The what? Good news was preached to us and to them. Two groups of people heard it. Amen? And I've been saying some things in here, and you're going to figure out why I've been saying this, because I've been saying on Sunday morning and on Wednesday night that the person next to you might not get in revival. But it's up to you to determine if you want to get in on it or not. You're going to see why now, because there's two groups of people that hear the word. Watch what he said. He said there's two groups of people. It was preached to them as well as unto us. But the word which they heard did not profit them anything. One iota, a lick, nothing. It didn't profit them at all. Not being what? Mixed with faith. Glory to God. In those who what? heard it what was preached the what gospel was preached to us as well as unto them but the word which they heard they got nothing out of can you sit in a church for 20 30 40 50 60 years and not get anything out of it according to the bible you can sit in church your whole life and if you don't mix the word you hear properly you won't profit nor will you benefit from the word you heard 
That's pretty amazing right there to me. I want to know then, hey, how do I mix this stuff up right? Because I want to get the right result. We say it a lot, amen. If you're making a cake, making cornbread, you better know what to mix right, amen. (laughs) Amen. And here's the deal, because the Bible says the Word of God has to be mixed with something called faith. How many of y'all want to know what Bible faith looks like? Not what you think it looks like, but what Bible faith looks like. Amen. Bible faith. Because what the enemy has done has substituted. He's he's real tricky how he does it too. And I've said this already in here. But he substitutes faith and he mixes another little bag over here on the table while you're mixing up your word, mixing up stuff. You know you got your flour out, your eggs, your milk, your butter, everything. You're ready to mix up something and get a result and get something to come out of the oven just like you was believing for. But the enemy's real tricky when it comes to the Word of God. He mixes, he puts out there on the table a big old bag, and it should be flour, but he mixes it, and it should be faith, and he puts the Word across it, faith, but on the inside of it, it's not faith at all. It's called hope. See, everybody is hoping God does something. Everybody hopes they get healed. Everybody hopes that something is going to take place in their family. Everybody is hoping that God is going to move in our church. But we're not hoping. Hope don't get it done. Matter of fact, you may not benefit at all hoping God heals your body. Matter of fact, you might die sick hoping God's going to heal you. Say amen. Because you got to mix it with what? If you don't mix it with Bible faith, then you know what? There is no guarantee any results come. So how many of y'all want to make sure that we're going to see this revival? We've been See, two people are hearing the message right now. Two people are hearing the message. Some are mixing it with faith. Some mix it with hope. Some mix it with doubt and unbelief. But here's the deal. There's two ways you can get results from it. One, I mean, there's only one way you can get result, and that's to mix it with what? Mix. Ooh, and I don't see. I see it in the Spirit. People starting to mix it with faith and say, wait a minute. What did he say? I said, you're not going to get it. You got the glory right now. I said, wait a minute, now faith is, amen? So once you start seeing this, you start saying, wait a minute, I'm going to mix this word a little bit different. I've been reading the Bible and hoping it happens for me. Well, you're not, I hate it, sweetheart, but it's not going to happen for you. Amen? You're not going to get out of the oven once you, I thought I was making a cake. It didn't turn out nothing like you thought, did it? It just didn't turn out how I thought it was going to come out. This didn't come out right. Anybody ever had that happen? Well, it didn't get mixed properly. Most people are waiting 20 years and they say, well, this, my life didn't come out like I thought it was going to come out. You hadn't been mixing it right. Woo, amen. You hadn't been what? You got to mix it right. Amen. God is not going to move. Not, God's not going to bring revival here. He already brought it. Hallelujah. He's already showed up. He's living big in you. He's already healed you by his stripes. You what? You what? By his stripes, you what? Not are healed. It says in 1 Peter 2, 24, by his stripes you you were healed. So if you were healed, you must be healed. Amen. So faith is something we got to make sure we got a good hold on because if we're going to see the revival, knock the wall down, build another building, see it happen like God says it's going to happen, and then take the gospel all over northwest Florida. How many of y'all know somebody got to get in faith for it? Because, man, when I tell you, when we was going around preaching in high schools and seeing thousands and thousands and thousands of people saved, people come up and they say, well, it's the end times. You know, it's just, that's just a sign of the times. It's the end times. God's showing up. He's showing out. No, it really, it is the end times. But really, somebody just had to believe that if they would stand up and go out and do it, Amen. then it would show up. It had nothing to do with what time it was. Not, a, not nothing to do with what time it was. Amen. All the revival you see all over the world right now, you see there's places that break out in revival. Things start happening. It's not God waiting to do it. Somebody finally said, wait a minute, I think I'm going to go cause a revival. Amen. 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 Oh, well, it's just a sign of the times. It's just a sign of the times. No, it's a sign of somebody got up and poured the glory out on somebody. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Whoa. Glory to God. Well, here's the deal. We want to know what they, how many of want to know what, what they heard? They heard the what? Gospel. But now I want to look at what the gospel is. Go to 1 Peter. I mean, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. I want to get somewhere tonight. <laughs> yes. Say this. Niceville is in revival. Niceville is in revival because I am in revival. I mean, how long have we been saying that? 
I mean, I mean, y'all been coming here a little while, and you know we've been saying that, we've been saying that, we've been saying it. We hadn't been saying that it's coming. We've been saying, nice deal, is it? I want you to understand how we say things. Don't you ever say, well, Pastor Roddy, he preached, and he said, it, he said the Lord's going to heal my body. No, I didn't. No, you don't. No, no, don't you put that in my mouth. Don't you run out in the foyer and tell everybody, Pastor Roddy just prayed over me, and he said that God's going to heal me. No, Pastor Roddy didn't say that. You might have heard that. That's why the Bible says, be careful how you, be careful how you hear. Because Pastor Roddy is not saying God's going to heal you. Pastor Roddy probably said God has already healed you. Oh yeah, just because you heard it a certain way don't mean it was said that way. Matter of fact, I've learned that most people don't hear what you're saying. They hear what they, they hear what they want to hear. But if you'll start hearing what the Spirit of God's saying to you tonight, change will take place and revival will show up and manifest real quickly. It don't take forever. It, it can happen, right, like I said, it can happen tonight. Yes. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, verse number 12. 1 Corinthians 2, 12 says, Now we have received. Say, have received. We have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God. How many of y'all glad you've, re you've received the Spirit from God? Boy, that'll help you right there. Hallelujah, I have received the Spirit of God, from God. I have God living in me. And watch this. And it says that we might what? That we might what? See, God don't want you in the dark. He wants you in the no. And it says right here, you have received the Spirit from God that we might know what things, know the things that have been Say, have been. Say it again. Have been. Say it again. Have been. Freely given to us. What's the Holy Spirit preaching? And they're going and two people hearing different messages. That Paul went around preaching the gospel. And he went around preaching about the things that have been freely given to the church. Hallelujah. And they looked up and they said, what is he, what's he preaching? It's called the gospel. It's good news. Paul went everywhere preaching this. He says right here that we got the Spirit that is from God because He wants us to know all the things that God has, 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 has. Freely, did you have to earn it? No. Do you have to be good enough? No. You got to confess it enough. You got to blab it and grab it enough. You got to do so, do, or can you just say, I'll take that right now? Yeah. See, you got to get to the place where you can freely receive because God is only freely given. Most people stay sick because they think they don't measure up to get healed. That's not how you get it anyway. You freely receive the healing because he's freely giving it. Amen? Even if you go up there with your good works, he's going to say, that's not how you get this. I give it freely. So if you'll humble yourself right now, I am the one who gives freely. I gave Jesus and I will give you everything you need. Say amen. Amen. Write it down. I see y'all writing right now. You ought to be writing right now because here's the deal. The gospel that Paul was preaching, he went everywhere and he had two groups of people he was preaching to. Some did not benefit from it, but others began to receive the message that everything had been freely given. Oh, and you want to see a revival break out? You let people get a hold of God has freely given you redemption, freely given you eternal life, freely given you health and healing, freely given you his glory. This is what we've been preaching. Say, this is right here what we've been preaching. See, this is it. We've been saying that Jesus said, Father, I pray that they may see the glory that you've given to me. I have. Say, have. I have given it to them. <laughs> and it says the Holy Spirit that lives inside of us is there to show us the things that have been freely, freely given. Now you want a mega revival right here. You let everybody start getting a hold because free will get some people happy. Oh yeah, you, I know it will because 50% off will make people act like a, a big old idiot. Oh, yeah, you go Black Friday shopping and you see if them people don't go down there and flood the stores, knocking over people. I mean, you got news, news shows they putting on. Black Friday, this man got mauled and this happened and that. Why? 
Say, I mean, 50% off, and they go in there, they getting wild over 50%. I want you to know the revival when it hits, and you realize that God has freely given you Jesus, and along with Him came everything that you're ever going to need. You can't remain religious another day in your life. Why are you so happy? Why are you so caring about Why are you sweating? Why are you spitting? I said, I freely, I got it all. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you get it? It was free. I just received it. Amen. Oh, see, but religion don't like this because they want you to earn it. They say you got to be good enough. They say you got to measure up. They say you have to do enough random acts of kindness. They say you have to do a lot of good. But my Bible don't say that. It says that the Holy Spirit that we have has been given to us to reveal the gospel good news to us that all the things have been what? Have been freely given to you. It gets me smiling. I just see sometimes I'm not even happy when I start preaching, but I don't preach myself happy. Hallelujah. I said I've been freely, I have freely received all the things that came with Jesus, and it was not just heaven one day. How I many I know you got a lot more going for you than heaven? Are you a Christian? You're going to go to heaven when you die? And we knock on people's door, we ask it, we witness to people. Well, you, do you know where you're going to die one day? And all we ever think about is dying. When Jesus said, I come that you might have life. Man, quit telling people about dying. Tell them about living. Man, I guess, you want the life of God in you right now? The glory of Jesus? The same glory Jesus walked in? You can walk in right now? We're not talking about dying and gold streets. We're talking about revival everywhere you go. I'm enjoying myself too much to leave right now. Amen? Glory to God, but that's what we want to go to first. You know, what, where are you going to go when you die? Well, how about you get ready to start living? How about you get ready to have life like you never imagined you could have another? Oh, man. How many of how many, you know you'll win more people like that? Matter of fact, go after church Sunday and start knocking on doors and ask people, do you know where you're going to go when you die? He said, man, the football game's on. Shut up. Not thinking about dying right now. My team is playing. I'm thinking about living. They all looking for life and looking for it in the wrong thing. Smoking the wrong thing, drinking the wrong thing, chasing after the wrong stuff, and we got everything they looking for. The life of God. Amen. So you ought to have this highlighted right here that now, say now. Say now. Look at that word now. Because it is a huge word when it comes to faith. Now we have received. Faith for revival. What's it going to look like? It's going to look like everybody knowing when they get here that it's now. <laughs> I'm in revival. How many of y'all in revival? Oh, yeah. I told, I told Bible college the other night. And see, sometimes things happen in the spirit realm. Nobody might run. Nobody might get slain in the spirit. Nobody might dance in the church. That don't mean anything. They could have done that in the flesh anyway. But when the revival really hits is the Spirit starts revealing to people everything that's been freely given to them. So that happens on the inside of you in your spirit and in your head. Amen. Some of the greatest moves we've had of the Spirit in here, nobody danced, nobody ran, nobody fell out. Holy Spirit is not interested in entertaining the church. He's interested in setting the church free. Yeah. Amen. That's why when I lay hands on people up here, and we did it a couple of weeks ago, you'll never see me. Matter of fact, I stood up the other day, and I started praying for people, and I saw everybody wanting to watch. And I had to walk back up on the platform right here, and I said, please do not watch me pray for nobody. You either enter in, or you start praying right now. God is not going to show, and they want to say, how many people fail? How many people fail? What happened? Did they shake? Did they jerk? Did they jiggle? What happened? God ain't here to entertain you. He's here to radically revolutionize and change everything about you. And you get the truth that you already got everything you're ever going to need. And you know what happens? Revival happens at your family. Because if it don't happen at your house, I don't want it happening here. Amen. Amen. That when, that's when it gets good. When it happens at your house, your family gets on fire. Your kids get on fire. Your husband's on fire. Your wife's on fire. Everybody's on fire because they start realizing what good things God has done for us. Yes, amen. But everybody wants to come and see a good show. I've seen it already. I've had people walk by the door, people that visit the church here, and they'll say, well, I was just trying you out, and I just wanted to, I just wanted to critique it and see how it was. Well, you were coming for the wrong, we ain't here to entertain. I hope, I hope, it, I hope it made a flying F. 
if you're looking on the outside. But if your spirit man got pumped up, built up, and told what it is that he really is, then amen, we can, you can come on in here and just see if it's going to be the place where you get fed. Amen? Yeah. But don't you go to church just to try to be entertained. You just missed it about a million miles. Amen. Paul said, my speech was not with eloquence. It was not of enticing words of men. It was with the power and demonstration. What was his speech? His speech, when he spoke, he spoke the good news, and the good news started setting people free. Amen. So right now, I want to make sure, how many want to make sure that we're in Bible faith for revival? Go over here with me to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 mix it up right so we can have it come out right <laughs> man I'm, you just don't even know how excited I am though because I love knowing that we showed up down here and we're going to see it come out just right I mean people might not like certain things and all that we're not here to please people we're here to see it come out like God said it's going to come out well how's it going to come out people being set free delivered and seeing who God really is and not seeing religion another day in their life if you, can get, if you can get people free from religion, you can get them set free. I mean, I remember the religious people hung Jesus on a cross because they sure didn't like how he was doing stuff. Because everybody, I mean, healing people on the Sabbath day. What are you doing? What are you doing? He said, that's what I come to do. I can't help but do these things. Amen? I only do what the Father tells me to do. And he's sure not interested in all of your rules and regulations. Amen? He never was. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, says this, says, Now, oh, there it is again. Hold on now. Is that, the, is that word up there again? Say now. Say right now. Now, faith. Now, faith. And I like to run those two words together. Now, faith. Not just faith, but what? Now, faith. Is the what? substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen or I like to say not yet seen you ain't seen it yet but it's on the way amen and it says right here these are the, this is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen now it makes a whole lot of sense because we've been studying revival we've been studying the, the spirit realm and the unseen faith it says is in the what unseen but it changes the scene. We said you don't see the wind blowing, you see the effects of the wind. You don't see what you don't see what's taking place in the unseen. You see the results of the unseen bringing substance to the scene. Oh, so you're going to see this in a second because here's how it really happened. We get in faith for this and we don't come in here saying, Lord, please pour out your spirit. Please do something. Father, I thank you that I'm filled with the spirit of God, filled with revelation, filled with it real, right, yeah. right now. Watch this now. It says this, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. Keep reading. By faith. Say by faith. We understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Some of y'all been here for part one, two, three, four, and five. You put everything together and you're like, oh, 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 wait a minute. Oh. See, now we get over here into now faith. And now faith is the what? Substance of the things that you are hoping for and we say it a thousand times here maybe you got it by now but hope is in the when is hope hope is in the future faith is in the go back to verse one faith is in the now say when now faith because we know this the bible says without faith it is impossible to what please god because he who comes to god must believe that he he what is not he will be and not he was you got to believe he is and if you got him in the future and if you got him in the past he is not going to move and he is not going to be pleased he is going to say you know what i'm waiting on you to call me the great i is say i is 
See, God is right now. He's not going to be. He is your healer. He is your provision. He is your joy. He is your strength. He is the revival right now living in you. The glory that you have, you're not getting any more. You already got all you're going to get. So you get this substance. So what are we hoping for? Our hope is for revival. But hope that stays in the future don't ever come. Because you wake up tomorrow and you're still hoping for revival. You wake up tomorrow and you don't, just don't never get there. But once you learn that faith goes ahead and gives substance to the revival, when? Now, by doing it how what? God did it. Says God by faith created the world. How do y'all how many y'all remember how he did it? He said, Light be. <laughs> Hold on now, wait. We're about to see this revival in the natural because God could not see anything. He wanted to, to see light, and if he wanted to see it, he had to start what? Saying it. And if you're going your faith is gonna be working like God's worked. You don't say what you want to see in the future. You call it like it be. <laughs> say, I call it like it be. Oh, my God. I say, I call it like it be right now. See, like be now. Amen. Joy be now. Finances what? Be now. Children be right what? Now. Amen. Light what? Be in my family right now. Revival what? Be here right now. Oh, it'll light you up like crazy if you see it. If you don't see it, it's like I'm trying to see it. Now, all you got to do is go ahead and say, Lord, open the eyes of my heart right now. Now, faith gives substance to the things you're hoping for. And it even goes on to tell you how. It says, by faith, God created the world. And then by faith, God, he framed the world. He wants, how many of you want to see this revival? Framed. He framed the world. We're framing the revival. We are, developing, we are creating this atmosphere by using our what? Our now faith. Woo, what if you started waking up saying, you know what, I'm not going to be healed. I'm just not going to be healed. I am not going to be healed. I am healed right now. I am not going to be blessed. I am blessed. What? Right now. I am not going to be free one day. I'm free in the spirit right now. I am not going to be redeemed. I what? I am. I be right now. Oh, when you start faith for revival, amen. I'm talking about faith for revival. We're not hoping God does something at this church. <laughs> Hallelujah. So when you stand up and you begin to say, I believe right now that revival be. Revelation be. Because you know what? The, the thing is, God's not going to do anything else for you. I'm waiting on the Lord, waiting on the Lord, waiting on the Lord, waiting on the Lord, waiting on the Lord. I'm waiting on the Lord. <laughs> I'm waiting on God. Well, He's waiting on you. He's waiting on you to get in now, faith. Because He's already given us His Son, given us His Spirit, given us His Word. And the Holy Spirit that He put inside of us is there to reveal to us all the things that He has freely given to us. So don't come up to me. Well, I've heard it my whole, don't you? Don't, don't argue with me on this. <laughs> I done read the book, amen? And don't you tell me, well, I just believe God's going to do something one day in Riceville. I don't believe he's going to do it one day. I believe he's already done it. And his body is the sleeping giant who's going to get up one day and figure out who they are. This revival, we're going to see it ain't going to take long. So don't, de don't be debating and praying about what you're going to do. I wonder if I'm going to get involved in that. Well, it might be over by the time you figure it out. Because <laughs> all of a sudden, people are going to stand up and say, wait a minute, as he, go over to 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. Whoo! Hey, that's, this, this ain't on my notes. I like this extra stuff. 1 John chapter 4. Anybody want to see this scripture right here? Yes, y'all. Some of y'all already know what it says. <laughs> well... I'm excited. Got born again. I'm going to heaven one day. I came to bring heaven here. I come to bring heaven right here. I got heaven in me. Heaven is coming out. I got the glory in me. The glory is coming out. Amen. You are the spout where the glory comes out. 
Hallelujah. Everywhere you go, take you to your family reunion and tell them, y'all, come on over here because I'm about to let some glory flow right now. <laughs> what do you mean? I said, he lives in me and I done figured it out and I done heard it. I done, and the Bible says faith come by what? Hearing. How come the, this revival don't come? People are going and they're hearing about things that people are standing up and saying and they're believing and they're, they're sincere in their belief but they're saying, I believe in that God is going to, we're believing you, Lord, for a mighty revival. We're believing. We are believing that you're going to pour out your spirit. I, it's just not any faith in it. It's all hope. And some don't benefit or profit nothing from the word. Some receive because they know that it is what? Now. And we stand up and we start saying things like, God is in me now. Greater is he that is what? In me what? Now than he that is in the world. Amen. By his stripes I what? Was healed. Amen. Joy is filling me up. When? Right now. Ooh, thank you. You can take revival home with you if you want to. Matter of fact, I'd rather go home with you than you act like you got it right here. Amen. Hallelujah. I've always, I've, y'all know I've always said that. 1 John chapter 4, verse 17. Y'all know the scripture. I just like to look at this. Yes, verse 17 says, Herein is our love made what? Perfect that we may have boldness on the day of judgment. How many y'all ready for judgment day? Woo, yeah. I got two hands and everybody else, I don't know if I'm ready for that or not. I don't know. I don't know if I'm ready for judgment day. <laughs> How many I know every one of us will stand in front of God? One day. And the Bible says that on that day, we're going to have boldness. Pretty interesting, isn't it? Because that ain't how I ever thought about it. All I ever thought was, yeah, I'm next in line, I'm next in line. Roddy Schaefer. Oh, Lord. Lord, you know I didn't mean it. I messed up. I didn't mean it. It slipped. It, it, I didn't mean that to happen. I didn't mean to say that. I didn't mean to act like that. I didn't mean to have that attitude for years. <laughs> Bible says you're not coming before God that way. It says you are coming in front of God, and it says on the day of judgment we shall have boldness. I believe it's because you're going to be in the line and you're going to have it figured out by the end that God is good. Look at that. Look at that. You know what? Jesus paid the price for my sins past, sins present, and sins what? Future. He's not bringing up none of that bad stuff. He is giving them the rewards of all their good works that they did on this earth. It is not the judgment seat of Christ. It is the reward seat of Christ. If you want to go to the bad place of judgment, that's the great white throne judgment. That's where it's ugly. That's where they're not bold at. They are like fisting to be cast into the eternal lake of fire with no way out. But that's not for us. Because the Bible says it's called the judgment seat of what? Christ. I mean, I don't know about the judgment seat of Christ. And when we go in front at judgment day, your judgment is coming and God will not bring up one thing you ever did wrong. If he does, he didn't judge it on Jesus. But I mean, he put it on Jesus. And then it says, you're going to come to him and you're going to, our love is made perfect because all, that we may have what? Boldness in the day of judgment. I mean, y'all know, I mean, y'all like reading the Bible. I mean, I know that'll set you free right there. Some people have been scared their whole life because the preachers have stood up and said, you'll stand before God one day. Are you ready to stand before an almighty God? Are you ready? You better and scare in the hell out of people. Run to the altar now and cry. An hour and maybe God will love you. And they stop coming to church. They don't want none of that. He ain't told them what's been freely given to them yet. He is just trying to work an altar call. And a good preacher gets good enough to work a crowd and get people stirred up. Get people to cry and watch your bottom lip and you know God was there when you did that the other night. He knows exactly what you did. And you call yourself a Christian. You call yourself a Christian. And the way your attitude is. You can fool everybody else, but you're not fooling God. You ever heard it? <laughs> I'm sitting there like, I sat there as a preacher and went, my oh God, I need to do something. I need to go get saved again. Because <laughs> I didn't take the first time. I mean, because they're good too now. They've been working it for years. And it's just, and he's mad. The church is mad. Everybody's mad. 
He's preaching hellfire brimstone and he's mad at the church because they don't give, they don't serve, they don't do anything and they, he's just preaching a mad message and you know what happens when you preach a mad message? You got mad people. They backbiting over here. They talking about this group. They talking about that group and everybody in the whole place just mad. The deacons want the carpet changed. They, the music's too loud. I don't agree with this. I don't agree with that. <laughs> Anybody ever been to that church? I done been there. Grew up there. After I got saved, which was after 23. But, amen. Let's finish reading the scripture as to why we might be so bold. How many of y'all want to know why you're going to be bold when you stand in front of God? On judgment day, your Bible says this. No matter what you've thought or been taught or been yelled at uh, all your whole life, the Bible teaches on judgment day we will be what? You're going to be bold. Roddy Schaefer. Here we are. Why? Why? Because. Because it says what? Because. Say what? Because. Your Bible says this because he knew people were going to question. What? How am I going to be bold? Because. <laughs> Why can't I be bold on you? Because. Because what? Because as he is, so are, 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 so are we in the sweet by and by, in the pie in the sky. I'm going to have it one day, a mansion. No, he said as he is right now, so are you right now. <laughs> Wait a minute now. You're going to have it figured out that you really are the body of Christ. Oh, you're not an old sinner anymore. You've been saved by the grace of God, placed in the body of Christ, the seat that he sits in. He's raised you up together and set you there with it. Now, when it comes time to judge his body, you're going to stand up and have what? Boldness, because as he what is. He what is. When? Right now. So are you what? Right now. And you might not get none of that revelation here. And some of you, your mind's tilting right now. What? The Bible says as Jesus is right now, so are you right now on this earth, in this world. Not in heaven. You're not going to be changed then. You are just like him when? Right now. Wait a minute, we said we got faith for what? Revival. Faith says that as he is, so am I. Right? He, Jesus said, the works I did, greater works will you do also. Why? Because some people are going to get the revelation that when he left, he also, when he was raised up from the dead, he raised the church up from the dead. Hallelujah. How many of y'all not glad? Death has no place in you anymore. You ain't afraid to die because death has been defeated in you. Why? Because life lives in you, amen? There is no victory. There's no sting in death anymore. It don't even scare you to stand in front of God. Why? Because you're coming in front of God as the redeemed. I'm at the judgment. How many of y'all glad you're going to be at the judgment seat of Christ? You're not going to the great white throne judgment where they're going to be cast into eternal punishment forever with no way out. It's not a two-week, two-year, 20-year deal. They can't get out. They will not be boldness over there at that one. But at ours... It says at Judgment Day, we'll stand up and we'll have boldness because as he, he is, so are we right now. What does that mean? In the spirit realm, he sees you just like Jesus. And I was swinging one day in a hammock, and I'm sitting there swinging in Genesis chapter 1, reading my Bible, and I'm sitting there reading Genesis 1, and it said, and God said, let there be light. And God said, and God said, and God said, and God said. And then it got down to verse 31, and it says, and God said saw all that he said. And the Lord said, read that again. Read that again. Read that again. I said, God said, God said, God said, God said, God said, God said. And then God what? Saw all that he said. He said, right, read that again. I knew he was trying to show me something. I said, what is it, Lord? I said, are you trying to teach me on confession right here? I'm going to see what I say. He said, that's one part of it, but I want you to see something else. He says, God said, God said, God said, God said, God said. And then God, what? In verse 31, it says, God saw all that he had, what? Said. And then he showed it. And then he, the revealer of all the freely things, the things freely given to me, he revealed to me. He says, Roddy, I always see what I said about you. 
<laughs> I said what? He says, I do not see an old sinner. I see you in Christ. If any man be what? In Christ. He is a new creature. Old things are what? Pastor, you might be broke. I see you as blessed. You might have cancer. I see you as healed. Hallelujah. You might be confused. I see you having the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Amen. Glory to God. You might be weak, but I'm going to call you what? Strong wind right now. He said, right now, I'm waiting on you to start seeing you the way I see you. Yay. Somebody say, hey. Say, glory. As he is, so am I right now in this world. Glory to God. He's waiting on you to start seeing you like he said you are. And if you want to go ahead and have revival, you can have it right now. Oh, if you're not, if, here's the deal. If you're going to be bold on judgment day, why not we go ahead and get bold now? That's what I got a hold of right there because I told you I would have threw up if I'd ever got in front of people and spoke. I told my, in my high school speech teacher I'd take a zero right now because I don't stand up in front of people and talk. But you know what happens when you start seeing who you really are and God says, right, I'm waiting on you to start seeing you how I said you are. I said you're blessed. I said you're free. I said you're strong. I said you're redeemed. I said that you are in him and he is what? In you. And I said the glory that I gave to him, I've given it to you. Now, when you going to believe it? I said, I believe it right now. More we started seeing mega stuff happen because we said, I ain't going to get it. I got it right now. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah. How many of y'all get excited about that? See, some of us don't get excited about it because I'm just, I just told you that everything you need is in you right now. So all you got to start doing is tap it into what you already got. Amen. Everybody say, all of Jesus lives in me. All His glory He gave to me. As He is, so am I right now in this world. I am lives in me. The great I am, He lives in me. Can I tell you? The great I am, He lives in me. His glory lives in me <laughs> whoa hey you know what and if it don't get you happy you didn't hear it Second Ephesians 2 I follow the Holy Spirit he's been telling me to turn to this for a little while I'm getting new people all the time that say, you know what some people have never heard what you're hearing right now some people have never heard this ever because here's the thing. The Bible says the gospel was preached to them as well as unto us, but they didn't mix it with faith in what they heard. Some people are mixing faith with what they've heard, but they're not hearing the gospel. The gospel is not what God's going to do. The gospel is what God has already done. So if you're hearing the wrong message, number one, that's the first thing. You've got to hear the gospel. And then what do you have to do? You have to place your faith in the gospel. Then revival has to happen. It's a pretty easy little formula right there. Amen? I won't say more something deep. Tell me what all I got to do. Twelve step process. No, it's two. Hear it, believe it, and act on it. Pretty easy. Not, take away the twelve steps. Amen? I'll give you two right now. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. Verse 4. I like verse, starting at verse 4. But God, who is what? Rich. Say, God is rich. God, who is rich in mercy. For his great love, wherewith he what? Loved us, even when we were dead in sins. He didn't love you when you got good. He didn't love you when you got in church. He loved you while you was drinking, drunk, and didn't think one thing about him. He loved you before you did one thing for him. That will mess up church people real fast too. But the Bible says while we were dead in sins, he had great love for us. Man, that will set you free too. All you, all you ought to walk around and do is, God loves me. I don't care who don't love me. God loves me. I don't care who's talking about me. God's talking about me. Amen. God loves me. He loved me before I did anything for him. So if I don't ever do another thing for him, he's still loving me right now. So keep reading because this is, this is pretty cool. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 5. Even when we were dead in sins, he has quickened or made us alive together where? With Christ, he made us alive when we were dead in sin. You didn't do anything about it. He made you alive. 
you reached up by faith and received what grace was given. Because it says it's by grace you have been what? Saved. I'm just a sinner saved by grace. No, you were a sinner, but your faith reached up and said, grace has given me new life. I think I'll reach up and take that and make it mine. Glory to God. Keep reading, because here's the verse I want to get to. Verse 6 says, and he has. Say has. Don't you love the past tense version of the Bible? Yeah. See, those little words will change your life forever. He has what? Raised us up together and made me, made me, say made me. You might not even wanted that seat. He made me sit Sit right there. Where you I'm seated, I'm seated together where at? In heavenly places. Where at? In Christ. How you doing? Well, it's pretty good where I'm sitting right now. Amen. Why? Because he raised me up together and set me together with him. We say it a lot. There is not two seats beside the right hand of the Father, and one is for the head, and one is for the body. One has the head of Jesus on it right here. That's the head. And then the body of Christ sits beside him right here. Jesus don't go and open two checking accounts. Bible says we are joint heirs together, what? With him. Amen. And there's not two seats. There's one seat in heaven. The head and the body are in the same seat. We sit it together with him in heavenly places. Where at? In Christ. I mean, I'm in Christ. You're in Christ. He's in you. You sat down. And the Bible says when you got, when he loved you and pulled you out of sin, he sat you down. Not when you got good, not when you've done enough preaching, not when you've done enough witnessing, not when you've done enough Bible reading. The Bible says when he pulled you out of sin, he made you sit with Jesus in heavenly places. Sit what? Together. Woo! How I many are glad that's good news right there? Where you at? Man, from where I'm sitting, under the current circumstances, it can't get no better than this. I'm seated at the, the greatest seat in the universe. Right now, as the body of Christ. Now do you see why we might be bold on judgment day? Because you don't have that revelation. Wait a minute. Wait, that's my seat. And Jesus' seat. We're seated what? Together with Jesus. Revi We're talking about faith for revival. Anybody, glad you Anybody got faith for what the Bible says right now? Whoa, I said right now, you have got it made. He made you alive together. You have got it made. How you doing? I got it made. Why? Because he, God made him who knew no sin to be made sin that I might be what? Made the righteousness of God in Christ. Y'all see what we're preaching about? It is the formula for revival we talked about last week. What do we talk about? We said that it is not condemnation, but it is the glory that's going to be revealed. Amen? It is the, the ministry of righteousness. Amen? The ministry of freedom in the Spirit. Amen? And then it says, we will be changed. <laughs> when, when you start looking and beholding Him, you become changed into the same what? image because that's who you were created to be. Jesus brought us the very image that man was created to be. Adam and Eve lost it. They sinned in the garden, but we are not fallen anymore. We are picked up. We have fallen, and we can get up. Amen. Oh, yeah. I mean, I remember though, I have fallen, and I can't get up. I can't. You see, the most of the church thinks they can't get up. They don't realize you already got up. Amen. How many of y'all remember the Scripture? Whatever you bind on earth is bound in I used to hear people preach it. They'd teach it. That means heaven's backing you up. No, it don't. It means I speak from two places. And if you'll start believing the things that you say shall come to pass, you'll start having whatsoever you what? Say. Now, i got to believe the things that I say. So if I know that I, in Niceville, speak right now, but in the spirit realm, I have been what? Raised up together, seated together in heavenly places, and I say, cancer, be gone right now in the name of Jesus. Now, I set it from here, and whatever I bind on earth, I also just bound from the right hand of God. <laughs> Whoa, oh, 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 
said, wait up. Did you, did you hear that? I said, whatever you bind on earth, you also bound from your raised up position in heaven. All authority has been given to the body. Jesus said, all authority has been given to me. Go ye therefore and make disciples. Woo, man. You, how many of y'all know that's good news? Now whatever I, now I start talking to stuff. I don't start talking about stuff. I start talking to stuff. And Jesus didn't say talk about the mountain. He said talk to that mountain. But he said something funny in there. He says, you, and whoever does not doubt but believes those things which he says shall come to pass, he'll have whatever he says. You don't have whatever God says, you get whatever you say. See, the thing is, most people don't believe what they say. They think they're not good enough. I'm unworthy. They've been told forever that one day you're going to get it, but you don't have it now. You need to go to Bible school. You need to go do this. You need to go. No, Jesus lives in me right now, and I've been raised up together, seated together. I'm not perfect, but I'm in Christ. And from my in Christ position right now, I say, revival, be. Amen. Hallelujah, revival, be right now. Healing, be right now. Kids, be on fire right now. Be now. Hallelujah. <laughs> Something on the inside is stirring up. I can see it on the inside of you right now. How many of y'all in revival? How many of y'all in revival? You got it right now. Amen? I guarantee you. I mean, here's the thing. Here's the thing. We will. We will. Watch as the glory. I love the song she sang. It says, it's rising. It's rising. It's rising what? Up. It's not falling down. Watch, your, watch what you say now. Because some people say, when the praises go up, the power comes down. And that's not right. When the praises go up, the power comes up. Amen. The glory is not coming down again. He already came down. And he's called the king of glory, strong and mighty in battle. And he lives in us. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Anybody excited about the King of Glory living in you? Anybody excited that you got the glory of God right now? Hallelujah. Well, here's what I'm going to do right now. Nobody stand up. Has anybody got any sickness in their body right now they need gone? It's been hanging around. You need it gone. You need change. Miss, Miss Joan, lay your hands on Miss Gail's head. You got the glory all in you. Miss Jan, uh, won't y'all, you and your dad, pray for your mom right now. The glory is all in you. Anybody else need prayer right now? Hallelujah. I ain't got to pray for you. I ain't no special anointing. So you, you need it. Tom, lay hands on Mildred right now. Go ahead, Miss Betty. Pray right there. Pray right there. Lay your hands on her right now. Pray the word. The glory is in you. Hallelujah. Glory. Anybody else need prayer right now? You need prayer right now. Somebody around you might be full of the power of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't have to come down for some special pastor to pray for you. You go ahead and pray right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The power of God is working mightily right now. The glory of God is being released right now. Father, we thank you right now that we lay hands on the sick. The sick shall recover. We thank you right now in Jesus' mighty name that you've raised us up together, seated us together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And right now, we call them healed. We call them strong. We call them free. We call them what the Bible calls them in Jesus' Jesus name we thank you father right now hallelujah glory to God they have had it revealed to them all the free things that have been freely given to them in Christ Jesus hallelujah glory to God glory to God glory to God now the revival see it ain't coming with a man y'all know that was one of the messages already if you think I'm looking to get glory you done missed it a million miles too I want to give God all the glory. Amen? I don't want the people to say, well, I have a special anointing. I got all the anointings. What special anointing do you have? I got all of them. Why? Because I have the Holy Spirit living in me, and He is the great gift. And He gives them to all men as He, as he wills. And you know what? He is willing. Say, He's willing. See, some people think he's not willing, but as he wills, whatever need is in here tonight, the Holy Spirit is here, and he's willing to release the power right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. I'll stop. My, amen. I could keep going all night, but I'll stop right there. Hallelujah. Now, how many of y'all faith for revival? When is revival coming? Hey, when is revival coming? 
When is revival coming? Right now, faith is the evidence of things we're hoping for. It brings evidence and says, revival be right now. You wake up every day and say, revival be in me right now. Strength be in me right now. Joy be in me right now. Depression be gone. When Jesus saw darkness, all he said was, light be. So all you stand up and you just say, right now. And what did he do? He released it with his words. You can keep talking about how dark it is. But Jesus, God never talked about how dark it was. He didn't say, Holy Spirit, look how dark it is out there. Well, look, they, need, they sure need some light down there, don't they? It's a dark world. Boy, it's a dark world. You ever heard preaching like that? They want to stand up and tell you how bad everything is. You know we live in a dark time. <laughs> We're living in some hard times right now. It's dark. Well, turn the light on. Amen! Amen! Turn on the light. Don't talk about how dark it is. Get up and flip the switch. Amen. And don't call on God. How many of y'all know if you're sitting in your house and it's dark, you don't call the power company. Well, we want to cry out to God. Lord, do something about the darkness. It's dark in our world. It's dark. There's drive-by shootings. There's catastrophe. There's wars, rumors of wars. God, do something. He's going to look at you and say, why don't you get up? Because I got no more power that I can push out. See, if you call a power company and you said, go up power, our lights are not on. They said, well, something's bad here, wrong, because you paid the bill. The power's showing that it's going all the way to your house. The, the power is showing that the power's reaching even up to your outlet. I mean, have you got... Have you tried? I mean, what, why aren't the lights? I don't know, but I'm on the couch right now, and I tell you what, they're not on. <laughs> well, have you flipped a switch? <laughs> no, I have not. I wanted to call you and tell you about it. I want to cry out to you and tell you to help me. It's dark. It's dark off power. They're going to say, click. I got an idiot on the line right here. You know, we're hollering to God, do something. He said, get up and flip on the faith switch and say, light be right now. Joy be right now. Peace be what? Right now. That's good right there because the power has made it all the way to you. There's no lack of power. God has dispersed it already right now. We don't cry out to God to pour out some light. Lord, help us. Now, we are the light of the world. You want to move to God? Shake and jiggle because God is in you. God lives on the inside right now. Oh, here's the I, now faith. Say now. now. Faith, faith gives substance to the revival we've hoped for. We call it now, right now. I call things that be not as though they were right now. I call my body that be not healed that it was and is right now. I call finances that be not as though they are right now. I call revival at my house and in my kids that be not as though it is right now. I call things that be not just like they are right now. Hallelujah. Go ahead and rejoice about it. Act like you heard it. Act like you heard it. Woo! Hallelujah. Man, man, man. Man. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, praise the Lord. <laughs> the word gets better and better. The word comes alive more and more. He's taking us what? From glory to what? Glory to what? Glory. You seen all them scriptures? Boy, I done seen them my whole life. I've seen things tonight I never saw before. Don't think I'm up here repeat and repeat now. I'm, I done looked at something. I said, Lord, it goes right here too. It fits right here too. It fit, it, it's like a puzzle coming together for me. I mean, y'all glad everything could just come together. Nehemiah started building the wall and there's a place in there in chapter 4, I think it's verse 6, says, and the work began to come together. I like waking up and reading that sometime and I start looking at how we started here with six people and I said, the work is just coming together. 
Hallelujah. Why? Because we started saying we was in revival in the Holiday Inn. Didn't we, Miss Gail? Didn't we, Miss Joe? We said revival is in this place. We ain't waiting on it. We're not asking God to do something about it. We're going to be that revival. Woo! And your family is waiting on you to be that revival too. Oh, yeah, you, you were put in this world and in, here, in this church, right? I guarantee you, God didn't send you over here to get religious. He put you in here to hear something so you could take it to somebody. I guarantee you. Jesus ain't interested and he's not, he is not impressed with no religious person in town. He is impressed with folks when they realize where they are and what they got and they start letting it out. You're a revival. You are a revival. Your mom, your dad, your brothers, your sisters, your cousins, your friends, your old friends, your ex-girlfriends, your ex-boyfriends, they all start hearing about what, what's going on. They're like, Lord, I, I don't I just, I get a chance to go back to Minden tomorrow. I get a chance to go to Minden tomorrow. I need a ride to the airport too if you can give me a ride. But me and Julia and Jake are going to Minden. <laughs> I'll throw that in there right now. You got all the glory and you sure ought to be able to give your pastor a ride to the airport, amen? <laughs> or I'll drop the car off and then I'll just leave it over there. But we need to, I need, we need to be there at 8.30. <laughs> but I get to go back to my hometown. And everybody in my hometown used to say, you done made a big change, hadn't you? I said, no, I hadn't. We're so proud of what you're doing. I said, I ain't doing it. I'm along for the ride. What's happening? I said, the King of Glory lives in me and he's doing all kind of good stuff right now. I'm just enjoying the ride. How many of y'all just want to enjoy the ride? I'm just along for the ride. Amen. Why? Because if I'm trying to work it, I've got to learn how to ride this thing. Why? Because it's been freely given. I ain't nothing I can do to make it work any better just to come up. My job, preach the good news, the gospel. Some will hear it and mix it with faith. Others will mix it with doubt and unbelief. Say, I don't know about that. You're not going to get it. Others will mix it with hope and say, oh, I'm hoping for that. You're not going to get it. But some will hear it and say, I'm walking out of here with it. I'm walking out of here with it tonight. Amen. I got it right now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, I, hey, let's pray over the offering. I'm going to stop. Praise God. Because I got to go pack a suitcase. Praise the Lord. I got an all-state nephew, my brother's boy. He's quarterbacking Friday night in homecoming against the team that I grew up quarterbacking. Isn't that cool? I quarterback the team he's playing against Friday night, and I'm on, I, I hadn't been able to see him his whole high school career because we've been in Florida. And I said, Lord, make a way. Just make a way. You know what he did? He made a way, and we're going to go right on down there, and we're gonna, I'm going to go give him some pointers on how to quarterback. I'm playing. He broke, he broke Northwest, Flo I mean, Northwest Louisiana records already. He was in the paper last week, 40 receptions, threw 40 receptions in the game and all this stuff. He's a pretty bad dude. But uh, we're going to go over and just celebrate, amen? Celebrate him. And I think I just, I, I don't mind going to, hanging out in my hometown and watch, watching my nephew beat my former team. <laughs> I'll be cheering for him, amen? Yeah. Glory to God. And he is a strong Christian. He's gotten offers from LSU, Tulane, Rice, Houston, and uh, Baylor for baseball, though he's a pitcher. He throws about 90, 95 miles an hour. And, uh, but here's the cool thing about him. I got a picture of him I put on my Facebook between innings after he strikes people out. Boom! Throwing about 90 miles an hour. He, between innings, before he pitches, he goes behind the mound, takes his head off, and prays. And then he looks at him and says, I'm going to strike you out again. <laughs> Amen. Good kid. Great kid. Awesome dude. But uh, anyway, I don't know why I said all of that right there. Oh, I, when I go to my hometown, they still, what? Right, what you, you still pastoring? Is that still going? Because <laughs> all they see is that old person. They don't see the new man. And I tell them that man died September 19th, 1995. There's a new man in Christ in here right now. I've been raised up together, seated together, the same glory Jesus had I got right now. You got five minutes, I'll tell you about it real quick. Oh, I, t I ain't afraid to tell them. Because they want to start, to, they, they, some of them's on marriage number four, five, six, seven, staying drunk, addicted to all kind of stuff, looking for the answer. Wouldn't it be a shame if we had it and didn't tell nobody? Sit right beside somebody at a football game and never told them what you got. Wow. Amen. 
Hallelujah. So pray for me too this week that the Lord, I'm a light shining in a dark world. I pray that when I go anywhere. I'm a light shining in a dark world and the Lord has directed my steps and ordered my path. Old friends, old people I see that I pass up and they go, what's up, Ron? I'm going to say, man, let me tell you, what's up? And they usually kind of walk off after, but I got to go on over here, man. I don't got time for all that. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to give tonight. We thank you. We're blessed to be a blessing. We thank you, Father, that we have been given all things in Christ Jesus. We have abundant life. Jesus said he came to, have, to give us life and give it to us more abundantly. We thank you, Father, right now in Jesus' name. Right now, every person's needs in here are met by the supply. You supply all their needs according to your riches in glory. I call their needs met now. I say money come and money be now at their house. They going to not say what they see. They're going to say what you said. I say finances overflowing. Their cup runneth over. It don't runneth out. I thank you in Jesus name that the glory of God is poured out everywhere that they go. They always have enough to be a blessing everywhere that they go. In Jesus name. Everybody say it. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and go ahead ushers. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Awesome. Thank you, Miss Joan. Me, Jake, and Julia. You don't mind giving Jake and Julia a ride, too, do you? Hallelujah. Saturday is another work day. Saturday is a work day. They're going to paint kids' rooms, prep for paint for kids' rooms, take all that metal junk off of the walls back here. We're going to put new paint in the hallway, in the in the office hallway over here. Uh, if you can come help. Come help if you can't, you just can't. Amen. But we'd like for all the help we can get. We have till December 1st to have this building totally renovated. We are not nowhere near finished. I hope y'all don't think just because we ain't having church that we oh they threw. No. We got a long way to go. We got a couple of rooms that half done. There's that that's got we got another other coats have to go on. We got things that's gotta happen. See Chris if you want to know what time people are gonna be here, because I'm gonna be in Louisiana. I'm flying back Saturday evening. But uh, I'll be here Sunday morning and see all the work y'all did. Amen. See Chris Ford to see what. And give it up for Miss Sue's testimony. Amen. Woo! About 8 o'clock.